talking about Stories BC. And then uh, next Sunday we will get more into the Christmas messages. But uh, today we're going to finish off Stories BC called The Three Hebrew Men. The Three Hebrew Men. So we're going back to the days of Babylon and uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. So why did everyone hate King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon? Well, because he would always just babble on. And we'll see that in some of these scriptures. He did babble on a lot. So so what would Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what would, what would their moms say? Well, they would say, I told you not to play with fire. Because we know they got thrown into the fiery furnace. Have you ever played with fire? Maybe they say, you know, if you play with fire, you'll get burned. Well, we'll see what happens to these three Hebrew men. So Daniel, of course, we talked about him already in one of uh, these messages. He was there and these three young men. And they were taken from Jerusalem. They were taken captive to Babylon in around 605 B.C. So uh, so what the, the, what they would do is they would not just, you know, defeat the enemy, but they would take the best of those people and they would bring them to their you know their kingdom and and uh, train them to be used in what they needed and so these young men probably teens were taken to Jerusalem they were trained for 3 years in this pagan land and were given the names Shadrach Meshach and Abednego but through all of this you know they they had already had their training in the word of God before they got there and they remained faithful to God as we saw Daniel continue to remain faithful but here we know that King Nebuchadnezzar he was a great king according to history he was a visionary he was a builder one of the things he built was the hanging gardens of Babylon do we have that so something you know, artist rendering of what it could have maybe been like, but it was, you know, incredible wonder. So, I mean, uh, it was a kingdom that uh, had a lot of accomplishments and things like that as far as the world goes. Then in Daniel chapter 3 verse 1, we will begin looking at this. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king caused to be made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits or 90 feet. And its breadth, six cubits or nine feet. So, you know, we got a, a statue, a golden statue that's nine stories tall. I mean, so you're looking at something, you know, it could have looked like that, perhaps. Uh, an amazing statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, so, of course, he made this for a purpose. And one of the things is, that we find in culture and society today is culture, society intimidates us to conform. They want, they want you to conform and they will intimidate you to conform so that, uh, you'll be, you'll go the way that the world wants you to go, the, the society wants you to go. One of the things that scripture tells us in Romans 12 too, it says that, that we're to not to conform. We're to not to conform any longer to the pattern of this world. So think about that. There's a pattern this world has for us. And it always keeps us away from God's purpose and plan. It always keeps us under bondage to a, uh, societies, how it thinks we should go. And one of the first things we are told to do is to, to not conform. <laughs> And it's really difficult in, in society today with social media, the pressure that young people feel to conform, to be like everyone else, whoever the, the, uh, the influencers are, right? And so, so this, this uh, statue that was built was part of that intimidation to conform. I'm the king. We are a great kingdom and you will bow down and you will do uh, what 
I say to do. No matter what God says to do. And so this is what humanism does. It dethrones God and enthrones man. Man always wants to be in control. That's why we always say, hey, you need to surrender to God. Because our will usually is that we want to be in charge. We want to be in control. And when we're, and if we've experienced things in our lives where we've been out of control, things have happened to us, sometimes we will go overboard on trying to want to control and not allow God and have faith and trust that He's in control. Now this golden idol was 60 cubits high and 6 cubits wide. 6 is the number of man in the scriptures. We see 6 is the number uh, recognizing man, humanity. But what is foreshadowed here in the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New Testament. And we see in the book of Revelations during the tribulation period, the Antichrist rises in power... With the world following him. And what happens? He, he, he is stamp, stamped with the number 666. The number of man. In Jerusalem he commands them to worship the idol of him. And here we see that played out in the Old Testament. And then it will be played out again in the end times. So... Daniel, let's go back to Daniel chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It says, as soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither. Anybody know what a zither is? Not sure. A lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music. You must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So, what are you going to do? Here we got the three Hebrew men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are they going to bow down? Are they going to worship the idol? See, this is the ultimate intimidation, that if you don't worship, if you don't conform, you will die. We're going to harm you. We're going to take you out. We're going to cancel you. (laughs) We're going to come after you. That's why a lot of Christians are afraid to stand up for what is true because we know what can happen in society today. So, that's what the enemy does. He wants you to know that you'll never measure up, you'll never make it, you're not good enough, you don't have the ability, you don't even need to try because you're just going to fail. You're intimidated and never step out to do what God has asked you to do. God requires of you. God has anointed you to do. See, we've all dealt with peer pressure, haven't we? Pressure to conform. But these three, when they were kids, as we said, they had, they had memorized the scriptures. They, uh, of what there was at that time, they had, they were aware of that. And they had been trained in that. And that did not go away from them. So that's why it's so important for us to teach our kids. Train them up in the things of God, in the Word of God. Because uh, these three Hebrew men, when they got in this situation, they didn't have they didn't have their phone to take out and say, "What did the Bible say about that?" <laughs> right? They were social. They didn't have any way to, except from their own training and their own memory, of what the Word of God said. Aren't you glad that they did not? They did not bow down. And the reason they didn't is because the scripture told them, you shall not make any graven image, you shall not bow down to an idol. So they stayed focused on obedience instead of the consequences. I mean, when a fiery furnace is the consequence, it's hard not to think about that. It's hard not to realize that there's going to be a consequence that for for serving God, there's a price to pay sometimes when we serve God. To take up our cross and follow Him. 
often we read the Word of God and we'll say, well, you know, I know this is what God wants, wants me to do or not do, and this is what I should be obedient to, but we'll have that word but. But, you know, this can happen and that can happen. Aren't you glad that the he- three Hebrew men didn't say, well, I know the, the Bible says that, but, you know. See, a lot of times we fear the consequences of standing up for God and following Him more than we believe in the promises of God. The promises of God are for us. So what golden image is causing you to, de- to defy God's Word? Is there a golden image that's set before you that you've been bowing down? Maybe even not even real conscious of, that you're doing that. But I believe that as the Holy Spirit makes us aware that there are things that the world wants us to bow down to and conform to. That we'd make Christmas just about, you know, all the presents and things like that. And that's fine and wonderful. But it's all about Jesus, isn't it? He's the light of the world that's come. Romans 12, 2 does say, be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. See, we're either going to be conformed to the world and its way of thinking, or we're going to be transformed by the Word of God. I love that. We can be transformed by the Word of God. We can stand the fiery tests and trials that come our way. We can stand the test because we have a transformed heart, a transformed way of thinking. We have a new attitude. We have a new way of living. We're going to be either conformed to the world or we're going to be transformed by the Word of God. What do you say? You want to be transformed? Let's get in and stay in the Word of God and His promises and not back down. Because in Daniel chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, it says, And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music... You ever heard of the Pied Piper? Kind of like the world plays its song, wants us all to follow in. Well, it was happening way back here. And then it goes on to say, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. <laughs> but if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? What God? Well, we know what God. What God is able. I want you to know that our God is able. Our God is able. See, our God can do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we can hope, fast, ask, think, or dream. Many people know of situations, circumstances where people maybe have made promises, but they did not keep them. And sometimes we attribute that to God. Well, you know, I know it says this, but maybe others have failed you. Maybe others didn't keep their promise. And so you might be skeptical of God's promises. You might know of a person who said, hey, you know, I believe God. I trusted God's promise, but it didn't happen. And so we'll go by what someone says instead of what the Word of God says. So God is not just willing The Bible says God is able. (laughs) Can you trust that he's able? Can you trust that he's the almighty God? And that he's able to deliver you out of the hand of the enemy. Because he said, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Well, what a prideful statement. But in his circumstances and situation, we could see how he would say that. He was in control. He was the king. He had this great kingdom. He had the fiery furnace right there. He had the resources to make this mighty idol. He had the soldiers to demand everyone to accept his plan and his will. But God is able. Remember when Jesus was born. Before this, Mary questioned God. 
when she was told by the angel that she would be with child. And she says, how am I able to be with child? How am I able? This is impossible. Jesus uh, said later, he's, when he grew up, he says, things that are impossible with man, they are possible with God. And so that is what happened. What was not possible with man was possible with God. How am I able? (laughs) We might say, well, God, how can you deliver me from the things that have caught me to be in bondage? The chains that that I'm facing that have locked me away. Maybe it's an addiction, whatever it might be. But God says his grace is sufficient for you. God says my grace is sufficient for you. My mercies are new today. I'm so glad because sometimes I use up all the mercies of yesterday. (laughs) But his mercies are new every morning. Aren't you glad? He has enough power. He's enough able to deliver us today. Even though we used up maybe all that was there yesterday for us. But he's got all that we need. All things are possible with God. All things are possible with God. God says his grace is sufficient. Remember Jairus in the Bible. He compels Jesus to come to heal his daughter. And Jesus says, do you believe that I am able to do this? Do you believe that I am able to do this? When you see God's promise and then you see the consequences that might be the circumstances that are around you, the difficulties, the golden idol that, that the world has set before us. Do you believe that God is able to accomplish what He has promised you? What do you need today? Do you believe He is able? He is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. He is able to do what you cannot That's what faith is all about. That's what our trust and faith in God is all about. To save us from our sins. To do something that we cannot do. To enable us to thrive in a world that wants to stop us. And so what did the three Hebrew men do? They faced the fiery trial. They faced the furnace. Verse 18 of Daniel 3 says, But even even if God, even if He does not... We want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Wow. What faith. Somehow, their relationship with God was so powerful and so strong. They had kept the word of God in their heart and in their mouth and a relationship with God that was so powerful. They were able to declare, even no matter what you do, even if he doesn't deliver us, We're still not going to bow down. We'll take our lives. As long as we don't have to defy our God. We will obey Him. Maybe they remembered the scriptures. Maybe they knew what God had said. It says, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. (laughs) God will be with you. No matter what you face. Notice that the Lord does not say... That we will not go through the fire. (laughs) But when you walk through the fire. When you go through the waters. When you go through difficulties and trials. That he will be with you. And it will not destroy you. A lot of times we are praying. God take this from me. God deliver me from this. And maybe he will. But as they said. Even if he does not. (laughs) We are not going to bow. We are not going to go a different direction. Our Faith is in God Almighty. And so He will be with us. I will be with you when you walk through the fires, when you walk through the trials. And it will not destroy you. I mean, what can man do to us? Even if they take our lives, we'll just step over into glory, into His presence. It'd be like, thanks, I graduated sooner. 
But God won't allow that to happen until we're through with the purpose and plan of God that he has for us. There was more that God wanted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to do. And their faith and their stand was a testimony to the entire world, to the entire nation. All eyes were on this event. The king is there. The idol is there. The people are there. They're all bowing down to worship it. And yet there's these three standing up. (laughs) And they're not bowing down. And they're like, oh no, we're going to see a show here. (laughs) We're going to see something here. And the king is talking to them. Oh boy, this is going to be some some expression of the king's power. But because of the promise of God, so too for us, we don't have to bow to peer pressure. We don't have to go along with the crowd. Because we have God's promise. We have a Savior. He is Christ the Lord. So how do we not bow when the pressure is on? Well, we've got to have confidence in the promise of God. This is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to what we think or what the world says or what Grandma said. No! (laughs) We have confidence because it's what He said. This is the confidence we have in Him because if we ask anything according to His will. We know that we have what we've required of Him. And so... Their faith was so strong that even if, even if he does not deliver us, we want you to know we're not going to bow. So we don't think of the what ifs. We don't concentrate on the circumstances. We concentrate on the promise of God. We have an attitude of a victor, not a victim. Boy, the whole world, it seems like the whole society, I'm a victim. You're a victim. Where everybody's a victim. I'm a victim because of this. I'm a victim because of that. No, we're victors in Christ. And we stand on the promise of God. We don't bow to that kind of attitude. We're transformed by the renewing of our minds of who we are in Christ and whose we are. We're determined to keep going forward even if we feel the heat. (laughs) See what I did there? Anyway. Be courageous by not following the crowd that goes against your faith, your belief in Jesus. Do not fear to be alone, but keep true to your convictions and beliefs. See, the the enemy wants to isolate you, and that's why it's so important that you're here today, that you're coming together. We're building up each other's faith. We're hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word when we receive these promises into our hearts, and when it's reinforced through fellowship with one another, I mean, it empowers us to go out and stand to our convictions and beliefs. You know, when you go out there and you stand against the flow, when you stand against what society says, a lot of people say, hey, you know, you're just one of those Bible crazy people. Whatever they call people today, I don't know. You think that way. Boy, that's just old-fashioned thinking. You know, you got to get with the new way of thinking. You know. They want you to conform. They want you to bow down. They want you to be intimidated. They want you to know that the fire is going to be lit. If you don't go the way we think everybody should go. They think you're a crazy person. You know what? They thought Jesus was crazy. His own family thought he was crazy. They come to get him, to take him away from what he was doing. (laughs) You ever think about that? Of course, we worship him today because he's the risen Christ. The fourth man. Let's find out who the fourth man is and that God is with us. In Daniel chapter 3, we'll read... uh, Starting at verse 22, it says, The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth man, the fourth, looks like a son of the gods. This is what King Nebuchadnezzar saw. This is what he said. He says, look, there's four men walking around. Who's this fourth man? He looks like the son of the gods. He was the son of God. (laughs) Hallelujah. 
And then verse 27 says, They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads cinched. I love that, don't you? Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? I don't know about you, but, you know, smell a little smoke. You know, maybe people are smoking or whatever, and you go by, you smell it. They said they couldn't even smell any fire on them. They had just been in a blazing furnace. The people that threw them in died because they got too close. And they fall in. And now they're walking around unharmed. There's a fourth man in there. I want you to know that God is with you when you're in the fire, when you're in the flames, when it seems just going to be too hot, seems it's going to take you out, you're going to be incinerated. If God is with you. All it will do, the ropes that bind you will burn off. That which binds you will be taken off. You can be free of the wounds and the baggage of your past. And those things that bind you and keep you away from God's plan. We invite the Son of God into our fiery furnace. (laughs) Right? And we'll be loosed because of it. We'll be freed because of it. God will turn it for our good. That That which was meant for evil. Instead of being annihilated, instead of being incinerated, instead of being turned into ashes, the fourth man was with them and they were set free. Free from that which bound them. What trials of fire are you or have you faced that you need Jesus to restore you? Do you need Jesus to restore? Face that fiery furnace with him. Invite him into your circumstances. Invite him into your situation. And say, Lord, even if you don't, even if you don't do it the way I think you're going to do it, I will not bow. I'm going to keep my faith and trust in you. Then we see in verse 28 through 30 of Daniel 3, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command. And were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Be cut into pieces and their houses to be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. I would think at this point he would have gotten the picture. You know what? God doesn't need to be defended. Um, (laughs) But anyway, verse 30. Then the king promoted. The king did what? The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego in the province of Babylon. So not only did they not perish. Not only did they... Not even singe their clothes or hair on them. They were free from their bondage. They come out and now they're promoted. Because of their faith to stand for God. That is the way God delivers. He always does that. When the Israelites escaped uh, slavery, they didn't just come out, you know, with just the bare minimum on their clothes on their back. They came out with all the resources of Egypt. Took their clothing, their gold, all their resources. And then the enemy was totally vanquished by the same water that saved them. The same avenue of salvation for them was the defeat of the enemy. And this is what happens here. And the king promoted them. See, God has a way beyond what we can even know and understand. When you choose to stand away from the crowd. When you choose to not conform but to be transformed. Choose to be transformed by the renewing of your mind to God's way, God's purpose, God's plan. Put that in your heart and in your mouth. Confess it every day. Believe it every day. Walk in it every day. Say, I will not allow anything, any golden idol, any other thing, any bondage to stop me from serving God and what God has promised. And God will do the work that you cannot do. And he will cause you to be promoted 
out of the midst of all of it. Face the fire. Are you facing any fiery trials? Make an action of faith on the promises of God. And he will be with you. And he will give you freedom from bondage. And he will give you victory. And let others say, hey, that is God in their life. There's a fourth man with them. He looks like the son of God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that even before you came 2,000 years ago to be born of the Virgin Mary, to become the Son of God, God incarnate, you came and delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace. And you caused the king, you caused the nation to know that there is no other God like you. Lord, I pray that that same light, that same blessing, that same power and strength be upon each one here. That during this Christmas season and during the rest of our lives, we will not go with the crowd. But we will stand up and say that our God is able. Our God will deliver us. Our God will be with us even if we go through the flames. Lord, we praise you and we thank you that you have delivered us out of sin. You've delivered us out when we face trials and temptations. And Lord, we will, you will go with us and we will come out with the blessings of God. And all the people around us will give glory to God. And Lord, I pray they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we bless our time of fellowship together. Lord, we bless the food and the hands of prayer.